This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone. And welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Why do many religions believe that abortion is a God-given right in some or even all circumstances? Many Jews believe that. Many Muslims believe that. Many other religions believe that. Many professing Christians believe that. I read this morning an interesting article by The Guardian about theocratic abortion rights given by divine guidance. This is what the article said. While religious arguments around the issue are commonly associated with the anti-abortion movement, abortion restrictions can violate the right to religious liberty, faith leaders say. In Judaism, abortion is usually seen as permissible and even required in cases where the patient's life is at risk. Now, let me explain. The idea is this. A mother's life is at risk because of the child in her womb. The child becomes the aggressor, the attacker. And so, therefore, the mother now has the right to kill the life of her baby because the baby has become an aggressor. It goes on to say that in Islam, Scholars contend that abortion is allowed for the first 120 days, after which it's seen as a civil, not a criminal issue, and it is permitted at any time when the health of the mother is in danger. Now again, in Muslim theology and tradition, scholars from medieval times had taken the position that until a fetus is ensouled, it is not alive. Now, what does that mean? It means the belief is that the soul enters the fetus 120 days after conception. Now, don't ask me how they come to that conclusion. Catholics for choice, the article says, believe that they have a religious duty to protect reproductive health despite the Catholic Church's stance against abortion. Nearly half of Protestants, 58% of Catholics, believe abortion should be legal in some or all cases. More than half of Muslims, 82% of Buddhists, and 83% of Jews believe the same. But then you read other articles, like this one, which was published by The Federalist on May 27. It is impossible, impossible, to look honestly at mass shootings and ignore the culture of death that prompts them. The barbaric ritual of abortion is in many ways just another piece of rotten fruit from the same godless tree. It is in rejecting the Creator's authority and the truth that he made every human being in his own image and for his glory, not our own, that our society embraces death. After all, if there is no God who assigns value to human life, we really are nothing more than aimless clumps of cells without worth or eternal purpose. So what about that? Our unborn babies... Are we all nothing but aimless clumps of cells without worth or eternal purpose? In other words, the accidental, so coincidental product of an aimless, godless evolution process. Fox News wrote on May 20, The abortion industry has for decades told women and girls that it pre-born baby is nothing but a clump of cells. That is a lie being told to millions of vulnerable women and, girl and girls who are lined up in abortion clinics, forced to fork over hundreds of dollars in advance and have their babies dismembered and then sucked out by vacuum from their womb. But from the moment a baby is conceived, it is much more than a clump of cells. 
At four weeks, a baby's brain and heart tissue begin to develop, and the first heartbeat can be detected after 22 days. Limbs and major organs start forming shortly thereafter, and then come the lips and nose. A preborn baby responds to touch by week six, and scientists have discovered that preborn babies may be able to feel pain as early as 12 weeks after conception. Ultrasounds show the beating heart and small fingers and toes. These are the facts. The abortion industry doesn't want you to hear. But even those Christian organizations which officially oppose abortion take a very disunited and somewhat hypocritical position in that matter. Take the Catholic Church as an example. Fox News reported on May 29. Pope Francis on Sunday named as Cardinal San Diego Bishop Robert McElroy, a Roman Catholic leader who had spoken out against the calls for bishops to exclude pro-choice politicians like President Biden, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi from Holy Communion over their stances on abortion. The move comes in the wake of San Francisco Archbishop Salvatore Cardellione's announcement earlier this month that he would bar Pelosi from receiving Holy Communion due to her stance on abortion. In naming McElroy, Francis passed over Cardellione, who holds a higher rank. Despite Cardellione's clear declaration, Pelosi received Holy Communion at the 9 a.m. Mass at Holy Trinity in the Georgetown neighborhood of Washington, D.C. last Sunday. Pelosi defended her position and condemned Cardellione's move in remarks last Tuesday. This decision is not consistent with the Gospel of Matthew, she argued. But does the Gospel message, according to Matthew, endorse or even allow abortion? Let's think a moment. What if Mary and Joseph had decided to abort their child because they wanted to avoid bad consequences, all these terrible concepts they would have to endure by a society which was extremely self-righteous. But you see, they were righteous people, as we read. They didn't think about it. If they would have done it, you and I wouldn't even have the Savior. Think about the logical consequences of the ridiculous idea when it comes to abortion, what it would mean. So, again, let me ask you the question. Does the Bible endorse theocratic abortion? Is there anything in the Bible about that? To receive answers to these important questions, I encourage you to ask for our free booklet. It's actually a book of 170 plus pages titled The Ten Commandments. Please ask for a free copy today. Until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.